quick recap what we all of us should not know i assume whoever taken whenever demo all of you are in the same line so today topic what we are going to proceed is operator and we already know how to make use of visual studio how to make use of you know compiler how to compile a program how to uh, run a program how to get the assembly of my code which is called post compile code all those stuff basic ideas already we have even variable how to declare how to use data into the variable how to calculate how to display which is called very very introduction part that we know now when we are calculating anything sometimes we used to use many symbols plus minus multiplication division less than greater than less than not equal to greater than or equal to many things you know just like our mathematics so here also in c sharp we used to have so many operators so first category of operator is arithmetic operator interesting topic not a difficult topic you know easy topic because we are already in basic level so obviously everything will be easy only uh, but okay uh, because of easy don't miss the class okay because these things will be ultimately related with our future topics so whoever how much strong in foundation it will be better only arithmetic operators just like on mathematics we have just like plus minus multiplication division modulus chances are for few it will be new modulus what is this modulus all about okay these things always we used to have in mathematics as well only thing is here we use star there you used to have x or something you know just like cross symbol for multiplication but here we use star there we use some other symbol for division here we use slash that is you know forward slash modulus is nothing but the remainder that means suppose somebody says please divide uh, 10 by 3 please divide 10 by 3 i am comparing with our primary school mathematics so that it will be even much easier somebody says please divide 10 by 3 so that time you never know what is 10.5 3.3 7.9 you don't know decimal also that time so you say okay when i am dividing 10 by 3 i am getting the result 3 and i'm getting a remainder called 1 don't you think that is your class 3 class 4 level mathematics i'm talking about right so for this remainder purpose how much remainder i will get if i will consider both of them like integer not as a decimal so what modulus operator does for us then getting remainder after integer division so remainder used for getting remainder after integer division not decimal division if you go for decimal division you will say hey result is 3.3333 no remainder but i said after integer division just like primary school mathematics we do integer division let's implement the symbols first okay then we'll go to next level that is assignment operator you know uh, null label operator uh, ternary operator various operators are there we'll go to that but first let's one by one implement it so go to visual studio create a project dot net core project click here on create new uh, guys anybody there who have never attended any demo class before not even this 
वीक एंड नॉट इवन लास्ट वीक और आई मीन इन वेरियस टाइम डेमोस वी कंडक्टेड इज देर एनी बडी हु नेवर अटेंडेड एनी डेमो बिफोर एंड टूडे इट इज वेरी फर्स्ट क्लास फॉर यू इज देर एनी बडी आया जो मेट इट्स नो ऑल राइट सॉरी नो आई नो यू यू वेर गेटिंग द डेमो क्लास रेकॉर्डिंग बट आई डोंट एज्यूम इट इज योर फर्स्ट क्लास बट ओके आई एम आस्किंग अबाउट दोज हू हैव अ नेवर यू नो नो अबाउट दर इज अ डेमो क्लास सो यू सेट दैट ओके फॉर सम पर्पज आई कैनॉट अटेंड द क्लास बट आई विल कलेक्ट द रेकॉर्डिंग सो आई नो दैट बट एनी बडी हू डजेंट इवन connect with me before you know that is what i am asking so i believe nobody is like that so everybody knows at least how to create a project and also right so click on create new project and uh, go to your uh language selection operating system selection and then application selection then dot net core so these are all we already did it in demo class that's why i am just confirming if there anybody who is totally not aware about these things uh, so here i will go for the project name project name is uh, uh, say i will give it as c sharp underscore operators desktop select the folder click the create project do you have not attended demo but requested me to share the video that definitely i have said don't just collect the video guys go through once also so that you will get to know how to use to discuss by chance you missed a class also don't just collect the video go through that video at night or so so that next class when we will join that time you will be in sync with other people as well all right that is common sense in fact but yeah follow it from the very beginning so that you will be sync with everyone okay uh, this is our project already we have discussed what is this using system what is this program what is this all these things so we will not spend time for that so let's directly go for the function which is going to apply our new operators plus minus multiplication division these are very easy still at least one operator let's to use out of this four and this modulus operator definitely will use because it's something new for us so come here and do some variables inside a function static void my function name will be say arithmetic operator underscore operator any name you can give but better to give some meaningful name all right arithmetic underscore operator i gave so that it will understood that okay whatever i am you know doing the operation here those are all for arithmetic operation for arithmetic operation let's plan something what plan we have to do here i will ask user to enter some couple of data i will say hey enter a value enter b value after that i will start a plus b a modulus by b a division by b and so on two operators let's try automatically will understand other two operators so i will try division and i will try remainder we will see what is the difference then easy to use plus minus multiplication and so on okay so integer i took a variable called a similarly i took a variable called b remember if both the data are of same data type you don't need to give it in two different lines you can give it also but if you are giving in same line also it's fine just like this okay because both are of same data type i will give something called c also so what i want i want c should have my result d should have my remainder part okay c should have my result and d should have my remainder part so first thing is i will ask user why don't you enter the first value and second value after entering first value and second value then we'll start using all the operators so let me quickly take that and dance then i will continue yeah 
yeah so i used to take a snap on the participant window for attendance purpose guys so better you name your correct name so that we can come to know your presenter absent okay so console dot write line that is called ask user to enter something so i i will ask enter your first value or enter first value these things you already know how to accept the data so i may ask few questions also to selective people from the participant window to answer me just to sync with what we have already st studied before okay so i want to accept it from the user integer value so i will say a equal to console dot read line obviously okay compare with your understanding also if somewhere gap is there you stop me by raising the hand and clarify it now here one error is coming okay so i want solution for this error suppose so i will ask first what is the problem then i will ask what is the solution in this red color underline specific people i will ask try to answer it if you know otherwise i will go to next student um i will ask to uh, ravi ravi fusan can you tell me why this red color underline is coming what's wrong with this uh, you are on mute you have to unmute yourself and speak ravi are you there oh sorry two people are in the waiting room let me allow them yeah ravi you are able to hear me so what is this error all about what is this red color underline why so what mistake i am doing no idea yeah few people have raised the hand but i will not ask you i will ask somebody else uh i will ask deepika why this red color underline very good so red line always takes in string format and left side unfortunately it is integer so you have to say data type casting some conversion very good so next question for uh somebody else uh haris what is the solution in this haris are you speaking on mute okay a recording is going on so he slept uh kishor kishor are you able to hear my voice some some recording or some class is going on behind you i think it is overlapping my class so mute it i will ask somebody else uh i will ask to zino zino can you tell me what is the solution here convert dot to int of how much bit 32 bit because integer text 32 bit of memory very good so this is the solution that means i accepted a value from the user okay and similar way i will accept second value i give please enter the second value and here i will say b absolutely fine all right so now what user entered both the values now we have to get use of these operators not a difficult task simply go for c equal to a divided by b that means division will be stored in c similarly d equal to a modulus by b just now i discussed modulus means remainder so remainder part will be picked up and stored in d now anybody is having confusion how much c will be having here imagine i am entering 10 for a and 3 for b for example okay how much c will have here 
This answer anybody can answer, not specific. Three, very good. What will be D answer here? One, absolutely. So is there anybody who has this question mark, ki are other people are saying three, here one, why I am not understanding why it is three, why it is one. Is there anybody like that? So that I can explain again. All are in same line, right? Everybody understood why C value is 3 and why D value is 1. I assume that because nobody has raised the hand. Let's cross, proceed further. Now I want to display actual answer as well as remainder. So you have to help me how to display it. We know console.write line is for display purpose. So console.write line. I will say after dividing curly bracket 0 with curly bracket 1, the result is curly bracket 2 and the remainder is curly bracket 4. What is this curly bracket 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. So let us see how I am doing. Curly bracket 0 means position number 0. Curly bracket 1 means position number 1. So, in same sequence 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on, I can go and put these values. So, here I will put A, comma, B, comma, C, comma, D. Replace this 0 with A. If your A value is 10, it will say after dividing 10 with 3, the result is 3 and the remainder is 1, like that it will display, right? That is one way of thinking it. Another way of thinking to this is dollar symbol. If you will give dollar symbol here, instead of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, directly go ahead and write A here, B here, C here and D here. Basic area, few newcomers are coming every day first week that's why little bit i'm repeating this but last class also in demo we have discussed about it so this will give me after dividing 10 with 3 the result is 3 and the remainder is 1 make sense kavya you have raised the hand you have any question on this mm -hmm. Correct. Left to right, it will take 0, then 1, then 2, then 3. So, here position number will give 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. To satisfy that position number, whichever, wherever you want to display, in the same sequence, you have to keep it right side. After that, double quote close. That is one way. And another way is, no need to think about position number and sequence number. See there, go and give it. Wherever you want, whatever, directly go and give it then and there. Only thing is, additionally, you have to put a dollar symbol here. So, I will say, after dividing 10, because A value, I assume, user will enter 10, with B, that means B value is nothing but 3, the result is 3, and the remainder is 1. Make sense? So, both are absolutely fine, whether position number with sequence maintained correctly or without any position number, without any sequence, Sida, give a dollar symbol and go for A, B, C in the curly bracket. This is one thing and let's put this function name here. This is called calling the function in main. This is called defining the function below main. Main is always entry gate to the compiler. Okay, main is always entry gate to the compiler. Compiler will come here. Imagine I have forgotten this function to call. What will happen? It came line number 8. It checked nothing is written inside. In line number 10, it will go away. Who? Compiler. And it will not get a chance to this come to this line, this line, this line, this line and all. Whatever you have written here. That's why always you have to call that function whichever you defined below. So, my function arithmetic underscore operator is having all the calculation, all the stuff, whatever I want to execute. But how it will execute unless I will call that function in the main function. 
right so i call that as well below this always i suggest to give something called console dot read key do you remember guys this is for what purpose this is for holding the cursor to stay there so that i can see the output properly put a breakpoint here okay i assume each of you must have known about debugging if you have attended demo class so debugging means what line by line compilation i want to see which line what is happening okay because i assume that we are a beginner level we don't know what is happening which line today it is very small and easy question who knows tomorrow it will be very difficult question so i have to know each and every line what my compiler is doing so i put a breakpoint here you can see extremely left side gray color bar we set as debugging bar so reason of putting that breakpoint here is i want to start right from here because entry point is here then i will jump to this function then i will ask compiler what you are doing here what you are doing here what you are doing here every line i want to observe what exactly it is meant for that line so that programmatically syntactically logically you should be very strong in future so debug it for debugging you have to you know select here debug and then click on the green color arrow mark few people might be already knowing this process but please bear it guys because um if you are you know newly joining today and so on so they might not have attended demo class so for their sake i'm just repeating that debugging process so i will go for f11 f10 we know today we are learning something called f11 f10 means compile the current line jump to next line but this time i don't want that i want from line number 9 i want to jump to line number 15 because actual coding is available in line number 15 so i press f11 have a look it came to line number 15 then i will press f10 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 so that i will get my result there so it came to line number 18 as of now if i will check a value is how much it will say are a value you have not entered what you are asking a value it is zero only so integer not entered means zero decimal not yet entered means 0.00 boolean not yet entered means false string not yet entered means null so those are all called default value so default value 0000, 0000 i will get for everything now but that is not what i want i want user to enter the a value and b value so i am asking user can you please enter a value or first value he entered suppose 10 same example i will take what we discussed then you cross check whether that 10 has gone to random access memory or not can you see a, a ram symbol a rectangle with some shading symbol that is a random access memory symbol so in random access memory it reserved a variable called a and it stored the data called 10 absolutely fine so that way i will go for b as well i will enter 3 that is also fine if somewhere mistake is coming you have to cross check are my b value overwritten to a or what no 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 a is independently having 3 b is having 10 or 10 or a whatever it is so you can cross check this way if any mistake you are getting absolutely fine everything goes well so f10 when a is 10 b is 3 my c is 3 am i really understanding this way my assumption is correct or not all those things you can cross check with the compiler's activity up to line number 24 it's absolutely fine as per our expectation then f10 again check it out d is how much that means it is saying when you divide a by b that means 10 by 3 your remainder will be 1 but your actual result of division will be 3 so slash indicates actual division percentage symbol which you set as modulus operator that indicates remainder that means after dividing 10 by 3 i will get the remainder as 1 so just i arranged all the things in a single sentence that's it in line number 28 so f10 if you see the output window you will see after dividing 
10 with 3, the result is 3 and the remainder is 1. Seems to be very silly that so easy example, so easy program, why Sari is doing like line by line, it's you know understood. But okay, uh, this may also helpful for future complicated program as well. This is called process of debugging. Now for second program, we will not do this because already we understood this. Directly you can run just like this. Have a look. If I don't want to debug line by line, quickly how I am able to run it. It will not ask me line by line. It will directly ask me enter the first value, enter the second value and uh, you know, give the result. So it is saying when I divide 30 by 7, my result is 4 and the remainder is 2. So output is in front of you, program is in front of you, so your instructor is in front of you. Any question, any kind of doubts, please ask if any. No need to hesitate guys. Huh? Others are not asking why should I ask what others will think about me. You know, they will not give me Oscar award. No need to think all those things. Please ask. Yeah. Kavya, you have some question? You have raised the hand. I think it is old one. Okay. Gino, you have any question? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, why we never define function in main? See, main itself is a function. Okay, main itself is a function. Correct. So main is also a function. This is also a function. Only difference is when compiler will come to this program, it will start entry here. It is just like entry gate in a boundary. So when it came inside this, I called this line, line number 9. That means from this line what compiler will do, you know, it will jump from this line to this line now. Then actual coding is written here, 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 here and all. Then it will execute all these things. In line number 29, again it will back to that line. Alright. After getting back, then it will say console.read key. So, if by chance I forgot it, then what will happen? Compiler came here, no doubt. Compiler only knows one thing, that I will come to main. I will go away from main. So, entry gate here, exit gate here. So, do you think this coding will be executed? No, right? Because it came here, entered into this, exited in line number 12. You never get a chance to come here. That's why always in main only you have to call the function. Uh, uh, exactly, I want to understand your question. Do you mean all this coding in main itself? All this coding in main itself, just like this? Instead of writing another function, do you mean to say that? Absolutely fine. Who is saying no? This will also work for you. But today's plan, you know what? Today's plan is not only arithmetic operator, we will try more operator like we will go for assignment operator, right? Operator, we will go for increment, decrement operator. So, what I assume, instead of making it very complicated to write everything inside main, because there only I will write everything now. Plus also, minus also, multiplication also, division also, less than, greater than, less than, equal to, greater than, equal to. So, it will be too complicated, don't you think? So, what I did, instead of writing everything in main, I divided into categories. I will divide into categories. So, all related to arithmetic, I will write in a separate function. All related to assignment or less than, greater than, etc., relational operator, I will keep in a separate function so that it will be easier to do only one task at a time. So, you have to say, in a, instead of writing everything in main, if you define the function separately, then that concept is called modularity. Modularity means dividing into various module. So, chance is there every time you don't want every operation. Got it or not? Imagine user wants only area of the circle, not diameter of the circle this time. If you wrote everything here, unfortunately, all the things at a time will happen. So, 
it is called dividing dividing entire program into various parts each part is called a function that's why i did the separate function called arithmetic operator makes sense we can write it absolutely there is no harm in this only thing is it will be complicated first thing second thing if i don't want everything every time i want few things few time only then also it will be possible now currently somebody can say hey i want to comment this line because i don't want arithmetic operator i want only assignment or relational operator absolutely fine no problem okay you call to respective function only so that respective calculation only will taken place see how i'm doing the second function here i'll go and write static void something called assignment operator that means what i modularize into two part one is completely arithmetic part one is completely assignment so if my user wants no 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 i don't want arithmetic i know it very well i don't want to execute it i want only assignment operator to be executed absolutely fine you just go there and uh, comment this function like this and call this function like this so that compiler will understand that acha this line i don't need to go because it's commented this line only i have to jump so here to here it will jump and it will simply ignore this coding so you can say it is for a better flexibility okay instead of keeping everything in one place and uh, depending like whether you want it or not it will divide it it will modulus it it will you know multiply it and so on uh, bindu you have some question absolutely absolutely not only so many functions in real time when you go so many classes also will write so many name space also will write slowly will go to that level but yes all this concept is called modularization okay Uh, the one which is commented it will not compile at all it will say uh, it will say i don't bother what is there i will not call it at all okay that means we don't want that already we have executed it i don't want that something like that but sometimes going forward we will be learning so many logical operations instead of commenting also we can put some if else condition okay slowly we will be learning those things like if so and so if admin is coming please call both the function if supervisor is coming please call only one function those kind of things also we will provide in future but okay as of now up, up to our very beginning knowledge since we are at the beginning level so i'm just commenting it because I already i executed i don't want to execute again i want to execute only something called assignment operator does that make sense so here you come and write something on assignment operator so what is this assignment operator all about what are the operators symbols one is equal to symbol everybody knows one is called greater than or equal to sorry plus equal to one is called minus equal to one is called multiplication equal to one is called division equal to one is called modulus equal to so these are all assignment operator these all are similar category if i will teach you one category out of this four or five you will understand it but this one is a separate category so let's do this one and this one any two of this will do so equal to symbol many times you have used it in this program also you have used equal to symbol if you see can you see equal to symbol here equal to symbol here why equal to symbol is called assignment operator because this is used for assigning some data to the memory so just like i said integer a equal to 100 this is also an assignment operator because i wanted to assign the value 100 to integer a but question here is a plus equal to five suppose i did can you see second operator in assignment list is plus equal to 
what is the meaning of this when you say plus equal to it is checking original value original value how much 100 then it will say add plus in the you know 5 in that that means writing a plus equal to 5 or writing a equal to a plus 5 okay writing a plus equal to 5 or mathematically writing a equal to a plus 5 both are exactly same that means what will be the value of a then 105 okay that means whatever original value please add with 5 if i did minus equal to a equal to a minus 5 it is as similar as that that means 100 is the original value make it minus 5 that means 95 will be the result so that way you can cross check here so i will come here below and i will say console dot write line after using assignment operator the new value is same thing again if i will give curly bracket 0 then outside i have to give a if i give curly bracket a then left side i have to give dollar symbol so i will display a value so how much you are expecting guys here it should be 95 right are you all in same line with me so here already i called it and i displayed it here so let's run and see whether really it is coming 95 all other operators are in assignment similar category multiplication equal to division equal to and so on and so forth so can you see you said 100 is the original value but minus equal to 5 so it become 100 minus 5 easy things but still if you feel any difficulty please write the hand then we'll go for okay do you feel these other operators will trouble you anything if you understood plus equal to minus equal to similar only then let's go for one more category called uh, we will say it as increment operator increment or decrement operator plus plus minus minus especially for incrementing by one or decrementing by one so should i write that line here especially for incrementing by one we use plus plus that means un indirectly you will understand that specially for decrementing by one we use minus minus what is a big deal right so how to use this let's see first so let's go for a function again and here i will say static void increment operators let's take similar way a equal to 100 and i will say a plus plus then i will try to display console dot write line after increment the value of a is increment by one okay incrementing by one the value of a is curly bracket zero comma a okay so how much we are expecting here plus plus says increment by only one that means what it should be one zero one okay so let's do it and see whether really one zero one so this one i will comment so that compiler will not go there and this one i will call so i'm expecting one zero one any operational problem also you are getting while i'm teaching you stop me okay not only logical or programmatic oriented things operational things also. sir how did you run it sir how did you compile it any kind of thing because you are all you know starting so i can understand everybody should understand so anybody can have any kind of doubts so no need to 
hesitate so 101 okay here we have uh, two way of using it one is after plus plus i mean after a plus plus one is before a plus plus also now what is the difference let's see if i'll use it if i'll run it you will not feel any difference have a look at this moment you will not feel any difference can you see before also it is coming 101 now also it is one coming 101 does it mean that uh, use it before or use it after doesn't make any difference does it mean that no there is difference let's understand that carefully so plus plus when i'm using afterwards that is called post increment plus plus when i use before the variable that is called pre increment so topic is know how about more little about pre and post first i will say pre increment basically when you use independently for a single variable like this if i will say this sentence particularly there is only one task don't you think here we have only one task called increment am i correct but if i will write here b equal to a plus plus so how many tasks are there in this line can i say here we have two tasks called increment and assign don't you think so increment to a task number one assign value to b task number two so wherever this kind of multiple task will be there in a single expression that time you make the difference so pre increment means use it beforehand just like this and meaning is first you increment then you assign to b that means my b value will be if, if my a value is 100 here then my b value will be 101 here b will be also 101 again i will copy paste this 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 sentence and all it is for you only huh it is not program program is only these two lines so i will copy paste it again then instead of plus plus using before i will use that plus plus after now check it out what will be the case here also two tasks one is increment the value one is assign the value but since it is used later it is called post increment post increment in post increment case post means what later na so increment later assign first because two task is there so assign first increment later here increment first assign later so increment later but assign first means how, what do you think what value will go and sit inside b 100 only because the meaning says assign first at last only you increment it because it's called post increment so here b value will be 100 okay little bit difference but makes many use of it in future so make sure you are using plus plus before the variable if you want to say all other operations should be taken later first to increment it but plus plus later means meaning is increment should be last first to complete all other operation whatever they are in this line so if you understood in this notepad simply you can copy paste these two lines and we can run it there so what i will do i will go to visual studio and here what i will do is i will say hey integer b is another variable just like this and i want to store incremented value in b if i want to store incremented value in b then plus plus a so i will write here after increment by one and assigning to b 
द वैल्यू ऑफ बी इज सो इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड द कंसेप्ट करेक्टली कैन टेल मी हाउ मच इन दिस सिचुएशन बी शुड बी anybody one not one absolutely one not one so let's run it and see whether really one not one or not so i will call this function here and i will see one not one so expected value is one not one let's see all right now let's do the other one other one means post increment i will simply make it somewhere here see the difference that means both the cases though a value will be 101 but b value in first case may be 101 in second case may be 100 so increment and then assign assign and then increment that is the difference between pre and post increment but if somebody say only increment not pre not post nothing just one variable increment it no need for assigning to somebody then absolutely fine no difference between plus plus before or plus plus after make sense to all of you any body has raised the hand this will increment to a this will increment to a later but before incrementing to a it might have already given the a value to b and unfortunately in line number 49 what we are displaying we are displaying b not a that's why i will get non incremented value but a if i will display both the cases it will be 101 101 only no doubt about it okay so when it will complete this line and come to next line a value must have been incremented no doubt about it but before is incrementing to a old value of a might have already given to b so coming to line number 49 since i am displaying b so it should give me old value only 100 only is that clear so increment decrement with pre and post we did next is relational operator fourth is relational operator okay there are three to four variety more but some varieties are related to next chapter so let me tell you a little bit but practically will implement in next class so one is relational operator one is logical operator these are all related to conditional logic conditional logic means what you know if so and so happens then do this otherwise do that that is called conditional logic so in relational operator we are using less than less than equal to greater than greater than or equal to not equal to double equal to so these are all used in conditional operations what do you mean in mathematics also sometimes you say is it a less than b something like this question mark you ask yourself right in mathematics algebra similarly here in programming sometimes you do like this is a less than 100 is a less than 5 that is a less than 5 is written here as if a less than 4 or less than 5 so this kind of conditional logic is necessary for implementing these operators mathematically what we are understanding correct only but to use it in actual programming you need something called if else condition so next chapter we are going to learn if else nested if logical if and or you know switch case many conditional logics we are going to learn so there we will be make you making use of this otherwise if you ask me quick understanding it is exactly same what you are using in your mathematics in your algebra less than means a less than b means a is smaller than b less than equal means may be small may be equal and so on not equal is exclamation mark equal exact equal means double equal 
imagine I say A is also 10, B is also 10, then my if condition will tell like this, if A double equal to B. What do you mean? Single equal to means give the value to A. Double equal to means check the value of B with A. Okay, so this is assign the value 10 to A. That's why equal to is an assignment operator. But here, if condition when we will use in next class, we will see this is like cross check whether a value equal to b value. This is the meaning here. That's why double equal to is a relational operator. Why? Because you are checking the relation between a and b. Na? So, it will come under a relational operator. But okay, more practical implementation about this, we will be looking at next class and logical operator also we will be using it in if condition only one is called double and symbol one is called double pipe symbol one is called exclamation mark symbol so these are also few symbols which is having some special meaning now if i will explain also it will be fully theory so i don't want that so next class when i will show you practically how to do if else conditional programming that time i will show you how to make use of this logical operators one more conditional operator which is dependent on conditions also that is called ternary operator that means tomorrow's plan is learning condition first then implementing all these operators one operator is there called nullable operator okay nullable operator that now itself another two minutes I will take and show you what is this nullable operator. So should I do one thing? Nullable operator I will make it four because today itself will complete it and these things I will make it as five, six, seven. So these three things, few more also there that we'll see tomorrow. Okay. Uh, nullable operator. Interesting. Let me ask whether you know about it there is some english word called null n u l l there is some english word called empty okay so anybody knows what is the difference guys i'm not asking about programming simply english i'm asking zero uh, zero is different zero is a value zero Blank is a value blank. Empty is blank. Absolutely correct. Okay. That means nothing. But null is what? Zero anyway will not come under this category. Zero is a value. I got zero in physics. What do you mean? Is it like result has not yet come? Result came. You got zero. Okay, I got null in physics, meaning is why result has not come, hold on, null, null means something like not applicable, empty and blank, both are same, it is having a different meaning, this is a value, this is a value, this is not a value, To understand little practically, I will go to Visual Studio. I will come back to you. Okay, so I will name it as static void uh, nullable operator. Imagine I made integer a semicolon and I run this program. Suppose just understand it practically so that conceptually you will get more clarity so i will come here and call that function who can say what will be the value of a 
this time let me run it zero we have seen it previous program also isn't it absolutely fine very good so that means it is understood that as long as you are not giving any value to integer it is zero but i will tell you one example where you will get heart attack you gave the exam okay yesterday result came actually this has not been collected from the head office they simply declare the variable they have not yet collected and assign it to a why because result has not yet come on they are still evaluating the paper so when notice came against physics you got zero against chemistry and mathematics you got something like 95 97 and physics you got zero why because it is zero na imagine it is not a it is physics so don't you think expecting zero as a default value sometimes it will not be appropriate don't you think so because somebody will say hey i got physics zero so how can he know that actually result has not yet come only if if somebody can able to assign null to him null means not yet collected not yet applicable not yet assigned not yet result produced so that kind of things is called null but unfortunately in programming when you declare an integer or decimal or any value other than string it will not expect null i mean it will not assign allow me to enter null so if i will say name name of the person if i will say physics marks here i can store null easily but here i cannot store null that is the problem part we are discussing about that means if i will say not yet assigned for name it will say no problem null na check it out only for name if i will say it will say by default it is null no problem at least one user will understand that acha name has not yet collected because it is null have a look name is null so if it will give name is amit then it's a problem how can somebody say amit if your name is not there amit no null is fine understood just like not applicable but in case of integer it is blindly giving zero so it may be non inappropriate one more example i will give temperature of city you are collecting from various city you are in head office in delhi chennai said temperature is uh, 37 degree mumbai said temperature is 28 degree bangalore said temperature is something like 25 degree now delhi said not yet collected imagine now what will go if not yet collected zero na because integer i have taken or decimal means 0.00 so don't you think zero degree itself is a meaning suddenly somebody will say are mumbai is more than 30 bangalore is 27 degree how can delhi be zero degree so if somebody is able to enter null into that temperature then at least somebody can understand that as a null means not yet collected so no need to worry so that kind of situation sometimes come in real time project as well salary he got assigned he got assigned that guy has not yet assigned because today only he joined in the company it will show salary is zero how can salary be zero for somebody so that kind of situation we want to avoid here we want to say not only my name should be null like this my physics marks also should be null can somebody help me but my technology is not helping me by default okay so to make it nullable to allow to be stored null we want to do something what to do you have to put a question mark here okay just after data type if you put a question mark that makes it nullable so let me copy paste it in notepad and make you explain about this question mark so here 
right side whatever i'm writing it is for your understanding so here question mark makes our variable physics as nullable nullable means able to store null capable of storing null so if result has not yet come then store null so that user will not take it like user will not understand physics marks as zero make sense so this is the meaning of why this question mark going forward maximum places you will see decimal question mark integer question mark boolean question mark so i will put question mark right after the data type but only for string i will not put question mark because string is the only data type that says without doing anything i can allow null also so why do why do you need to put question mark like this okay so just like string if other data type also allows to store null into it then you can put a question mark right after the data type and before the variable name that is called nullable operator question mark is nullable operator where is where, where i am writing i should write these things somewhere here so nullable operator is nothing but question mark operator let's save it operator still not finished guys I will continue it next class and I will stop recording now.